extensible integrated workflow solutions for all kinds of apps. And I think that the next question that you probably have is something around that. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Um, so I was actually doing this presentation the other day, putting everything together, and I stumbled on this blog post by Jeff Geerling, who I think works at Acquia. Um, and he had done a really good job kind of describing what the perfect local development environment uh, has, the features that it has. Uh, and these were the nine ones that I kind of extracted uh, from it. Um, if you were to put MAMP up here, you could cross some of these off, uh, possibly, maybe not. Um, but, you know, usually one technology has a couple, one has another. But these are the, these are the things that you would want to have if you wanted to have a perfect local development environment. Uh, Calibox 2, as a CLI, which is nearly beta, has about this many. Um, simple and easy to set up, as you might imagine, are probably going to be in the GUI version, which we hope to release in a, in a, in a few months. Um, so that's kind of where Calibox 2 sits as like a local development product, as an integrated workflow solution that has kind of all of these features right now uh, where it's at. And uh, when we're finished, it'll have all of them. So. I think that we've taken a huge step to solving the local development problem. Um, we're not quite there yet, but this is about how far we are now. Uh, many people here are familiar with version one of the product, which was uh, you know, kind of a quick proof of concept that we developed quite a while ago, maybe about a year, a year and a half ago, and uh, kind of put it out there to test the waters, see what things are like. Um, it might be a good way to just kind of start there and figure out what version two looks like from there. Um, the easiest way to say it is that there's basically nothing in common between version one and version two. Um, that obviously doesn't contain a bunch of information, so I think I'll expand on that a little bit further. Um, so if you were to construct a not super um, accurate axis of things, which is what I've done here, just to give you a picture, um, mostly between you know Vagrant on the left as like a more of a virtual a VM type uh, tool. It does do containers, but I think mostly it's virtual machine stuff and Docker on the right, um, symbolizing just like containerization and container technology in general. Version one was essentially just uh, a, a really light wrapper around Vagrant. Um, we spun up a virtual machine for you, we gave you a bunch of tools, you got what we gave you, and if you didn't like it, you know, tough. Um, version two uh, is much more on the Docker side of things, which means that we get all the features of Docker and containerization. Um, which we'll go into in a little bit uh, greater depth. So from a technology standpoint, this is kind of how things uh, stack up. From a user experience standpoint, you can also think, you could, you could think about Calibox, this Calibox 2 CLI as just a really super fast, highly customizable version of Vagrant for containers. Like a lot of the things that you do on the command line are gonna be very similar to what you do uh, with Vagrant. Um, so just to dive a little bit deeper, this is essentially what the Calibox 1 architecture would look like. Um, you had to run on Mac, that was the only thing that it worked on. Um, it spun up a Vagrant VM from a Puppet server, uh, which was basically just an Ubuntu 1204 instance with our Calistack Puppet set of manifests on top of it. And then you just had one big monolithic server, your entire infrastructure was in this one machine, all of your tooling was also in this one machine. By tooling I mean things like Drush or Node or whatever. Um, and you basically just put all your sites on top of that, uh, that entire stack. So you had multiple sites running on one machine. Uh, so each site was its own vhost, essentially. Um, and then we had some nice integration with Pantheon where you could pull a site down. And I think it was fairly easy to use in the GUI as well. Um, yeah, and then we gave you these things in V1. And again, like we, this is what we gave you. If you didn't like it, then you were SOL. Um, version 2, that's a little bit different. So this is the architecture in version 2. As you can see, it's a lot more fun. Uh, fun is good. Um, so in version 2, you can run it on anything, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, although on Linux we've only tested it on Debian-based distros, so if anyone has Fedora or if people are still using like Slackware, uh, give it a shot, I guess. Um, so the architecture now is we still have a VM, but it's basically running uh, boot to Docker. Uh, if anyone's familiar with that, it's just a small, lightweight VM that's based on tiny core Linux. Um, and uh, we're running the Docker daemon inside of it. Uh, and we can spin up containers and run certain kinds of apps on these containers. So you could have a backdrop app that's running on Nginx or an Apache uh, PHP, uh, PHP app server with like Maria or MySQL. You could have Express on some other containers. You could have Drupal running you know, on a, a cluster of 
MySQL servers with Redis and Memcache and other fun stuff. Um, and then with our plugin architecture, which I'll show you later, you can provide all these different connectors to different services. So you could push and pull from Pantheon or to Acquia or, or GitHub or uh, to Jen Jenkins thing and do Jenkins things. Um, one of the really nice things about containerization is it allows us to provide this kind of wall of separation um, between the actual infrastructure that's running these apps and tooling that developers need. So we don't put, so if you're, if you're using Drupal with Drush, as a lot of developers do, um, normally that kind of like sits like in your infrastructure. Like if you're running MAMP, it's just kind of like on your Mac. If you're, if you're using something like Calistack, usually you just put it into your web server and that's like where your Drush is or you have it installed locally and you do the, the remote thing, which is also a good, a good model. But in this model, we don't have any tooling in our infrastructure. So our Nginx ser well, PHP app server or any of our other containers that might be hosting or running a Drupal app, Drush does not exist inside that container. Neither does Grunt or any other set of, any, any other set of tooling that you might be using. What we actually do is we set up containers that run, just are specifically designed to only run Drush commands. So we have a Drush container. And every single time you run a Drush command, it spins itself up, it runs a container, it attaches your app onto it, it runs the command and then destroys itself. This might seem somewhat excessive just to run a Drush command, um, but the model is actually quite nice because now you can write, you can have one Drush container, one Drush plugin that can work on any of your apps, which is really nice. So you have this ultimate portability and you don't really lose much in the process. Um, it also allows you to do fun things, like you can have like four different versions of Drush in this container if you want, and you can kind of tell it which one to use, uh, which is pretty cool. So a much more complicated architecture, but it provides a lot more feature, ri feature richness, much more customization options, um, and again, more fun. Uh, so just to go back to like hard numbers, uh, Calibox V1, which was, most, which was Vagrant based, uh, it took about 15 minutes to install it, uh, and that's basically like from I have nothing on my computer to I have a Drupal website. Uh, V2 with, uh, with containers and some other things, we're able to cut that down to five minutes. Uh, that's like downloading the, app, downloading the actual CLI, running the installation, and then spinning up an app. Um, to compare kind of performance, uh, with V1 and Vagrant, we were using NFS for file sharing. If you know anything about NFS and file sharing and Drupal, it's not exactly the funnest thing in the world. Um, which, and that actually really slows down the web server performance quite a bit. Uh, so we are implementing this thing, this peer-to-peer -peer connector called sync thing, which is really neat. Um, and that, uh, that actually gives us almost native performance on our, on our server or on our containers. Uh, so you can actually get, like if you're just installing Panoply, like the time that it takes to run the batch API on V1 was six minutes. Um, so that's actually a good approximation for any real vagrant stack that's using NFS to just two minutes on um, uh, Calibox 2, which is a, uh, obviously a great improvement. Um, again, V1 was basically just like one monolithic web server with stuff in it. V2, you can have a plethora of containers. We have ones that we've written that you can use. You can write your own fairly easily, which I'll show you. And then we gave you these like approximately 20 tools. And V2, basically, you can use as many tools until you run out of memory, um, which I wouldn't recommend you try to do. But you can do that if you want. And if you do do that, please come and find me and show me that you've done it, because I'd be interested to see what happens. Uh, the other fun things are Windows support. Uh, so this whole thing works on Windows now. So people who are using Windows, congratulations, you now have a legitimate development tool that you can use. Um, <laughs> uh, and people who are on Linux, again, we only tested it on Debian so far. So um, anyone who's using Fedora or some, some other uh, Linux distro, it'd be great to see like what it actually does. Uh, we're more than happy to provide support for it, but we'd like to have someone who actually uses that. Um, so one of the fun things about Calibox 2 as well is it's not Drupal specific. You can actually run kind of whatever you want in it. Uh, that's another advantage of having containers. If you wanted to spin up like a mean stack and run Express, you could do that. If you wanted to run Backdrop, you could do that. Laravel, Jekyll, WordPress, this other thing called Drupal, whatever that is, uh, you could do that as well. Um, and uh, the nice thing too is you can actually, you can build these into repeatable kind of deployable prototypes. So we've actually developed two that you can use right now and I'll show you them, back, one for Backdrop and one for Drupal, but you could easily write your own. Um, so if you were a, a, a development shop that you know, ran mostly Drupal sites and WordPress sites, you could make an app um, you know, that had the, the containers that you want to run, that you're used to running. If you're currently using like Puppet or Chef or Ansible or something, you can easily use those, those manifests and translate them into containers um, and put them into this. 
Um, and you, we can also, you can also add additional function, uh, functionality with our uh, plugin layer, uh, which I'll show you about as well. So if you had a workflow where you, for example, like pull your sites down from Pantheon and then push them up to GitHub to do, you know, Travis or something, you could write that. Um, very small app, it'd be like less than 300 lines of code probably, you'd have to build the containers, and then you can deploy that to all your devs and that's what they use, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, and for right now, um, when we have the GUI out, you can think about how powerful that will be where you can have your DevOps person go in and do this, and then the Calibox GUI becomes kind of your deployment mechanism for all your infrastructure and your tooling and whatever. Um, so again, yeah, so one of the really fun things about Calibox is this plugin system, I think this is actually what gives it quite a bit of power. Um, so almost everything in Calibox, uh, the Calibox 2 CLI, is customizable or overridable or extensible. Um, I'll go into like kind of specifics and show you that a little bit later, but just give you a kind of idea of the breadth of the kinds of things that you can do is there's a, it's, it, Calibox 2 is a Node.js application. Um, so there are lots of events that are emitted that you can lock into and tap into. Um, we give you access to quite a bit of utilities to spin containers up and down and do that sort of thing. Um, so with this, you can add like extra commands to the CLI. You can add integrations with other things. Um, and uh, you can do that sort of that sort of stuff. You can build these apps that I'm describing. We actually built the container engine uh, as an interface. So if you wanted to actually try to do this with Rocket or LXC directly, you could actually write an implementation for that. So we just chose to do Docker because, well, you already know. So um, yeah. So here we go. So this is the container. This is the interface that I was just describing. We implemented Docker. You could implement other things if you wanted. Um, but we just chose Docker because it seems somewhat ubiquitous right now, although who knows what will happen. Things are moving quickly. Um, so that's what, we're, that's what we're using for right now. That's the back end of pretty much everything. It's based on the boot to Docker project if you haven't used it. Um, we give it a little bit more of, a, of an oomph for developers. It's kind of not super useful for Drupal uh, out of the box. Um, and all this stuff is open source. Um, it's on our GitHub, uh, which is just github.com slash Calibox. There's like 30 projects. Everything that I'm going to talk to talk about right now is on there somewhere, either as a repo or in documentation. We also have API docs and all this other fun stuff, and it's all accessible from there. So if you are taking notes, that is the, probably the most important thing to write down. Um, so what does all of this crazy talk mean? It means these five things, that, if you, that this technology will save everyone tons of time. You can finally use the tools that you deserve. Um, MAMP is... I mean, that's really all I have to say. Um, so, you know, it's, it'd be great to, you know, use, use, a, use modern tools for our, our local development, just like we do in our production. Um, speaking of production, with Calibox 2, you can actually achieve somewhat close to production parity, if not complete production parity, depending on how you go about doing it. This allows you to standardize your team and your tools and your flows. And, of course, it's fun to use the latest and greatest tech and not things that were invented in the Bronze Age of the Internet. Again, ma'am. So this is my, like, uh, I guess metadata slide that you're not supposed to see. That reminds me of the things that I'm supposed to do. So let's bump out of this and actually start to do some fun stuff. And let's check to see how far this timer is. Good. Cool. So that's good. That's always the boring part of everything. So let's go in and actually try to do stuff. Um, can all the people in the back actually see this kind of, or no? Can I get a, is that a, is that a power to the people or a yes? Yes. yes. Or a power to the people. Yeah, it like once. Like once. Uh, twice? <laughs> Maybe three times a lady? I mean, let's see. All right. Is that good? Okay. So, uh, Calibox is an NPM package, so I'm not going to install the whole thing from scratch, but you would just do an NPM install global Calibox to get it. Um, I already have it. Um, here's some fun commands that we give you. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all of them, these because you can read and you can use this thing, so I'm just going to kind of get right to it, which is creating some, some apps that we can run. Um, these, uh, these two apps, Backdrop and Drupal, these are two completely separate projects that exist. That you can imp so this is uh, you can implement kind of your own if you want, and I'll show you as we spin these up. I'll kind of show you what these look like, uh, so you can get a sense of how e how easy that that is. So yeah, just to go through again real quick, actually, like so a lot of these commands are um, 
you know, things that you're used to kind of seeing in Vagrant space, they're very similar. Uh, so let's just start really simply with uh, a kbox create and we'll create a Drupal 7 app like this. Actually, let's do this first. So for any command, you can pass in flag h to get all the options. So this gives you a sense of the kind of things that you can do with this command. When this command is over, what you'll have is um, basically two containers, a PHP app server container and a web server, and a, and a uh, MariaDB server. And these are kind of the options that you can, that you can give it. Uh, what version of Drush you want to use, the PHP version you want to use, uh, whether you want to build from a local Docker file or not, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, if you don't pass these things in, the command line will ask you because it is considerate. Um, so let's go in and actually do one of these fun things. Create Drupal. Um, and I'm passing in this flag I, which means just to automatically install it after I create it. So what will this app be called? Let's call it awesome. Uh, then you get some nice options, like what major version of Drupal are you trying to build an app for? I'm just going to do seven. Um, it'll give you some nice options, like, oh, what versions of PHP do you want to use? It'll give you the default, probably best version for what you're running. So if you put Drupal 6 in there, it would give you 5.3. Um, so you can choose that. And then again, you can pick a Drush version. We'll use Drush 6 for this example. And then just some other fun stuff like my git name. So I'll do something like this. And uh, but you didn't know that this is email. Um, so we can see what's happening right now is we've actually pulled in five different plugins that we use on this app. I'll, I'll go through those in a little bit. Um, and now it's just pulling some containers from the Docker registry. I've actually already pulled them, so they're just going to come down really quick. Uh, and when this is over, we'll have a bunch of containers to run our app, uh, which will be exciting. And as this is going on, it will only take a few seconds. I'll just go in and kind of show you what an app looks like. So I created this awesome app. This is the thing that I just created. The architecture of the app is, I wish I could make this side thing larger, but maybe I can't. But this is, this is big though, so that's good. So the essence of, so an app, an app is also just a node project. Um, and it's, it's main meat. Uh, well, actually, so it has like a normal package.json. These are where you grab, where you can grab specific plugins. I'll go into plugins a little bit more in a second. But the main, the main action is in this cowbox.json file. This is where you can tell it all kinds of fun stuff. For example, it's na the name that you want, the plugins that you want to implement. Again, we'll go into that in a second. Um, there's this shares ignore directory. I can, I can get into that in a second as well. But here's kind of like where you get to the real, the real awesome, awesome sauce. Uh, so here's where you can like specify your Drush version, your PHP version. Um, this actually allows you to, to inject Pressflow settings. We do the database part for you, but if you wanted to add like additional configuration and stuff, you can do that. It also will inject backdrop settings if you're using, if you're using backdrop. Here's again the email stuff that we put in here. And here's the real fun stuff. This is the actual, this is the actual like, manifest file, I guess you would call it. This is where the contain, this is the containers that we're grabbing and using. Um, there's just two right now, this DB container with the Hasmaria and this PHP app server container. So you might ask, where do these things come from? Which would be a great question. And I'm here to answer it, which is that they come from the Docker registry right now. We've created our own PHP app server. We've created our own MariaDB server. And by default, this will pull from Cal the, the actual repo is on the Docker registry. It's Calibox slash PHP app server. And then the version of Calibox that you're running as the tag. However, these are all overridable. So if I wanted to do like, um, you know, Bob and like my FP is front page 98, by the way. If I wanted to like load my front page 98 web server, um, you know, tag stable or maybe latest would be more fun. E. Um, you could do that as well. Or for example, if I wanted to add some additional, so this is like a very trivial example of like what a containerized infrastructure for Drupal would look like. If I wanted to go in here, I could also add Solar or Redis or whatever and pull those containers down as well. Um, so you can kind of put whatever you want in there. It doesn't, and, and sometimes you can put seemingly arbitrary things in there. In the, on our GitHub page, there's a Calibox app examples repo. And in that repo, there's a, an example of running a Drupal 7 app with a hip hop virtual machine, uh, which you haven't done is kind of fun or haven't done before is kind of fun, I would recommend you do it. Um, I didn't know how to set up the hip hop virtual machine at all, but I found some guy who did, and he had a Docker container, and I just literally put his thing in there and made a couple of small tweaks, 
and it just worked. So you have access to a lot of power with this. Uh, one of the other really fun things about this too is if you, if you're, if you are almost 100% perfectly happy with our app server, but not 100% perfectly happy with it, you can actually make small changes to it or use your own, um, and actually try it out. Uh, so the Docker files for all these are actually in the repo for the app itself. Uh, so I could go in here and say, yeah, you know what? I think that I think that the Calibox MariaDB 070 app, uh, you know, DB server is pretty swell. But what I really want to do is add, you know, um, Vim to it to make it the best app server or the best DB server ever. Um, you could do that um, if you wanted, and then restart your app or rebuild your app with this build local flag passed in. And instead of pulling from the repo, it would actually it would actually build it from this file. So you can go in and you can play around and do all sorts of other things. So if you wanted to use Calibox only to try out Docker containers and multiple and orchestrate them, like you could do it just for that. Although I think that would be somewhat missing the point. Um, however, feel free to do whatever you want to do, of course. Um, so that's basically the architecture here. There's this other uh, small key here. This basically just lets our reverse proxy, which is Apache, know that this is an app. This is a um, a web server, and to like redirect things to this machine for this app. Um, so that's all good and fun. Again, you could add additional containers. You can do whatever. Um, so this is already done. So we have an app that's been installed, um, and we go into we called it awesome. So now if we just do a kbox start, this will actually spin up all the containers uh, to get our app running. So there's more, so it actually will spin up more than just the app server and um, the DB server. It'll also spin up all these support services and instantiate sync thing, which is the thing that will actually sync your code back and forth. Um, there's actually four containers that run by default just to power the whole magic of Calibox. Uh, one is Apache, which functions as a reverse proxy. Uh, so that way you can like actually type in, you know, my awesome app.kbox. Um, and have it be directed to the correct uh, container. Um, and then there's two other, uh, three other things, DNS mask, just to handle the actual resolution. If you've ever tried to do anything like this um, and you've managed, tried to manually manage Etsy hosts, that is like tantamount to suicide. Uh, so having something like DNS mask is actually quite nice. And then we have two special things, SkyDNS and SkyDoc, which are Docker specific containers. And those four things are actually completely overridable too. So if you wanted to build your own custom version of Calibox, and have Nginx as your reverse proxy, or just a random container that prints out hello world forever, uh, you could do that. Um, I think that second use case is probably what a lot of you are thinking already um, on how to use this. So at this point, we have a container. We have two containers running, and we have, a, we have infrastructure that is prepared to receive a payload of Drupal awesomeness, which we will grab and put in there from some place. So I'm going to grab just the Pantheon Drop 7 repo. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because we have a plugin for Pressflow settings, and this way we don't have to do any settings.php management, which obviously is also nice. So what I'm going to do right now is run Kbox again, and what we're going to see is that we get all these other fun things um, inside of this app. Um, so we have, we have commands that are specific just to this app, um, plus the other commands that you saw before. Um, some of the ones, sorry, I can't actually read this because this thing is in the way, but um, so you get extra stuff uh, that are provided by these plugins, and I'll go into the plugins in a little bit. So things like Drush, things like Git, uh, what else does that say? rsync, other fun things. So we're going to use the Git plugin really quick, uh, so which will be kbox git clone. I'm going to do depth one because we're in conference Wi-Fi and we want to download the entire history of Drupal. Um, and we're just going to do this. So what, what's actually happening when this happens is we're spinning up a container that's only purpose is to run this git command. It's attaching our app onto it. It's actually pulling the code down and then destroying itself. Um, so you actually don't, so one of the nice things about this is we actually, there's actually nothing that you really need to put on your computer. Everything is just inside of the VM, including all your tools that you normally use, uh, which actually becomes quite nice because if you extend this model to things like Grunt or Node or whatever, um, now you have a way to make sure that everyone literally is always using the same thing in the same environment, which is obviously going to be awesome for you. So we have Drupal. Now let's go to, uh, I guess, awesome. Awesome was the name of the thing. 
awesome dot I'm barely gonna read this awesome dot k box and here we go here's Drupal yay Drupal um so yeah yeah I mean the the beauty of Drupal should never be concealed of course um, it does a good enough job of it itself I suppose um, so yeah we'll just go through here we're just gonna install Drupal 7 really quickly uh, you can see that this is like fairly snappy to do which is uh, which is pretty nice and then um, we can just bounce around and try some things out really quick so you can see that there's fun things happening um, so let's just call this uh, my awesome site and I'll put my email in there and we'll make a secure admin username <laughs> with password that is also very secure and I think that we're in the US and we don't want to receive email and I don't know what that is and yay here's Drupal out of the box and you can see that it's nice and quick much faster than you, what you might expect for uh, something else that is local other unspeakable things um, what's that I think it could, could be begin and end with lots of things but that might be one of the choices um, so yeah so let's just go to our uh, oh. Oh, right, because we don't need that. Um, let's just go to our PHP info file real quick, which is somewhere in here. Right, so here's just our PHP info file. This will just tell us some fun things about our instance. Um, and let's just figure out how we can go about maybe changing some of these things really quickly for fun. Um, so as you saw before in our app example, we have this nice uh, version thing. So we could switch that out and rebuild the app really quickly and get a different version of PHP. So if you have requirements like that, you could do that. Uh, which is pretty fun. The PHP app server that we have actually contains a bunch of versions of PHP inside of it, so you can kind of specify whichever version you want, and it'll pick the, it'll pick the one that you're using. Um, the other fun thing is we actually have almost all of the configuration that's relevant to you for your services exposed to the outside. So in the actual code directory here, you get things like your APC config or your PHP INI or your www.conf, which is the FPM pool, um, and your Drush alias. And you can go in here and change a bunch of these things and rebuild your server and get that stuff to take really quickly. So you don't have to like actually SSH into anything and like dick around with Vim or Nano or whatever those things are that crazy people do and, uh, and do that. You can just change it in like a nice pretty thing like this on your Mac using the things that you like to use. Um, so let's do that really quickly. Let's say that we just like really need a little bit extra from our APC. Um, let's go in here and you know maybe this is a lot and we don't need that much so let's just bump it down a little bit and then we really think it's important to inject some special environmental variables into this because we think that that's gonna make everything better all right so we've done this, and now we're going to do this fancy kbox rebuild command. And again, as I was saying before, you could actually um, you could actually pass this build local thing in. So if you wanted to, oh, actually, sorry, we actually didn't even switch out this version of PHP either. So let's let's say we want to downgrade because we do. Um, so we'll do that as well. Um, but if you did this rebuild command, all these things will take. But you could also go in and use that build local thing and. Uh, and do and add your vim in or whatever you want to do. Um, so you can rebuild in lots of ways. So it's really easy to change stuff around, and it happens fairly quickly because we're not rebuilding monolithic VMs from puppet manifests or whatever people are doing these days. Um, so yeah, so we'll just do a kbox rebuild, and what it will do is it'll stop everything, and then it will pull, all, it'll destroy all the containers that we're running except for the one that has our data in it, and then it will respin all of them up with all these changes in place. So when this is done, we should be able to re-go to that info file and it will have uh, PHP 5.3 and it will have the different settings and all of our stuff and it's gonna be nice and awesome. Um, and while that's happening, I'll go in and show you kind of what these plugins look like really quick. 
So plugins are ways to extend, uh, extend Calibox. In fact, we dog food the entire system for the CLI itself. Uh, so I'll just show you a really brief example of one. Um, you can add them to all of your apps really easily. So for example, we have a Drush plugin. We have that same Drush plugin is what we use for Drupal 6, Drupal 7, Drupal 8 for backdrop. Um, we have a Git plugin. You would theoretically probably want to use that for all of your apps, no matter what you're actually doing, whether it's a Node application or a PHP application or what have you. Um, and they're very simple. So I'll just show you a brief example of the Git one. Do not be intimidated by a lot of those files. They're mostly just like for CI and testing. The meat is actually just this index.js file um, and this Docker file. The Docker file basically just defines a container. And this container, essentially run, this container essentially functions as a Git executable itself. So even though it is a container and has a service inside of it, you can kind of think about it just as a Git executable. Um, uh, so that's kind of how that works. The rest is in this index.js. Um, all plugins have this sort of structure where you get this kbox object. And the kbox object has a lot of fun stuff in it. And uh, all that you can find at api.calibox.me. Uh, which is nice. You can see the kinds of things you'll have access to, uh, certain config, um, the actual engine itself, so you can spin containers up and down, um, the event runtime, so you can actually hook into events. So if you wanted to, like, say, um, print a Beatles lyric after your app gets spun up to, because it really just mm, gets you ready to do your stuff, you could do that. Um, and if you do, I would submit. I would suggest that you submit that as a Calibox plug into the NPM registry so other people can get that functionality as well. Um, yeah, so api.calibox.me, you can get that through the GitHub uh, repo as well, but all the things are documented, so you can start to write your own fun stuff. Um, we'll go back to the Git thing, but it looks like this is done, so let's, oh, we actually have to start it also, so we'll start that, and then go back to this, this thing. So that kbox object, all the stuff that was in that documentation is this thing right here. Um, this allows you to get a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. So the, the structure is pretty simple. There's only like about 100 lines of code, and this is what allows us to spin up and run Git commands. So for 100 lines of code, we have an app. Uh, we have, sorry, we have a plugin and a container that can run Git commands on any of the apps that we want to have, which is super fun and super awesome. And it's very easy to do. So for example, when we were looking at that list of tasks before the command line printout, and we had that Git uh, command that we could run, this is this is that that part right there. We have a framework that you can use. This task framework, we can easily add other commands. So we added. Uh, this git command, and basically just runs this run git command function, which we define further up here. Um, we also do some fun things, so like here's like the events system that we're using. There's this post install event. So when you install this Drupal app, it's also saying, oh hey, like I need this, I need this git container also. Like it's pretty important. So grab it and install it for me as well. Um, so you can you can actually get the tools you need on all these apps too. Here's the actual run uh, engine dot run. Uh, which is accessible in all the plugins. Um, so here's the actual magic that we're happening. Here's the Git username and Git email that we entered earlier. We're sharing our SSH directory so we can get our keys. Um, we're sharing the data container, which actually has our code and stuff in it. So every time this every time this thing runs, it's just running a Git command in the container with all the stuff we need, uh, as we showed you when we pulled down that that uh, Drupal code earlier. Um, so let's keep going on. Uh, let's see, um, what were we doing? Oh yeah, we have this app. So we've restarted this app, and now if we refresh this info page, we can see that the version has changed, which is nice. We can see that we boosted our APC up by one. Oops, I don't want to add a bookmark. What's happening? There we go. Uh, yeah, so we can see the APC went up by one unit of meg, or I guess two units of meg. That's fun. Um, and our PHP info. Uh, oops, sorry, I guess we changed our memory limit, so we can see that that bump got bumped down, and then we uh, added that really awesome environmental variable so we can all be on the same page about the awesomeness factor, which is face melting. So it's really easy to go in and like change your stuff around. Like, we provided same defaults, but you can go in and you can, you can change these things really easily. It's a lot easier than having to reprovision a whole machine. You can do it in a matter of seconds, which is obviously helpful. Um, so let's uh, let's continue on and uh, maybe look at this Drush example really quickly. Oh, actually, this, this, so this is this is a very very simple example, um, very small amount of code. This essentially just adds Pressflow settings and backdrop settings 
um, automatically to all the apps and containers that you have so that they know that they don't need to use settings.php. So you could use this for any of your Drupal apps as well. Um, the Drush example looks very similar to um, the Git one. It's a little bit longer, but not that much longer. We just define a new task called Drush, and it does this run Drush command thing uh, with the Drush container itself, which looks essentially like this, which is we actually just copy from the PHP app server itself, which means that those two things are exactly the same. So when we change that PHP version in our config and we run a Drush command, we know it's the same version that Drush is running with the same version that our app server is running with, which is obviously helpful and can alleviate pain down the road. So we're just grabbing the app server container and adding Drush things to it, and that's what we're using. So this actually has four versions of Drush in it, uh, for major five, six, seven, and backdrush, which is like a hacky thing that sometimes works on backdrop. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I'll just show you like running a running a. So if we're in the app here and we just do like a kbox drush status, um, now we don't have to have drush like anywhere on our stuff, and it'll actually run and give us our our stuff as if we're running it natively, which is pretty sweet. Um, we can also go in and see that we provided a um, some options as well. So if you if you really wanted to just like try things on different versions, like you could do this sort of thing. So if we just do drush status again and pass in drush version equals five, this should run with drush five now instead of drush six, which you can see there it is 5.11. So this is kind of the power of having these portable containers. You can run these different versions of different things and they're super portable and you can put them kind of wherever. Um, so lots and lots and lots of power in this sort of this sort of architecture. Um, so you can imagine, you know, if you're if you're a Drupal shop or an organization uh, that's using like Vagrant or something else, like you can really simplify a lot of your stuff. Um, you can deploy it faster. You can change things faster, um, and benefit quite a bit. Um, and of course, your your actual development itself will be a lot faster, as you can see by just bouncing around here quite fast. Um, the last thing I guess that I can show you that is also fun is so inside of this inside of the app directory you also get this code uh, directory which is actually where your Drupal code lives. So this is synced through really quickly. So if I were to go in and just edit like um, uh, where is it index.php and just say like something like this. Oh, I can't spell. Right? And maybe purchase Sublime. Um, <clears throat> don't tell anybody. Uh, you know, and then kick back to our Drupal app. We should see that that is now the robots have taken over. So that's just how you edit your code. So what's actually nice about this, or you can think about this uh, in, a, in deployable terms, like now you have an entire repo that has not only your app configuration in it, but also your code. So you could actually put this in GitHub or somewhere, somewhere else, I don't know, Bitbucket or whatever other people do. I don't, I think it's just GitHub really. I mean, but, um, so you could put it online and you could basically have all your developers just grab it. All they have to do is pull it down, run kbox install, kbox start, and there they have their, they have their app with all their stuff and that's great. Um, so you could do that as a deployment kind of like strategy for right now, which I think is pretty neat. Um, so that's kind of the meat of it. Um, I think time is starting to dwindle a little bit, so I think I think questions might be nice. So I'll just kick back to the Brezzo. Oh yeah, let's talk about things to come. So yeah, so this is basically everything that we have for right now. Um, I would consider it an almost beta for the CLI. Uh, these are the things that we still have left to do that will make this the solution to all of the local development problems. So these are the things that we're working on for the next, I guess, half a year. Uh, which is to do push and pull integration with Pantheon and Microsoft Azure and WordPress support for people who are using WordPress also, which may be some of you and maybe not be some of you. Um, so one of the big things that we had don't have, we haven't done yet, which I think is going to be a real awesome, uh, real piece of awesomeness, is this idea of pushing and pulling. So when you create an app, you also say, oh yeah, I want to create this app with all these containers and all this fun stuff. But I also want to get my site from Pantheon, or I want to get it from Aquia, or I want to get it from some other place, and you can pass in those options as well, and it will pull the site down and build the whole thing for you. Right now, you have to like pull your code down and set up your database, which is kind of a pain. 
Um, so we'll be, we'll be providing that sort of thing. And those will all be plugins too. So if you're an organization who has a weird deployment sort of scenario, you can pull from multiple places and push to multiple places. For example, at Kalamuna, we, we have standardized and we use basically Pantheon for almost all of our stuff. Uh, but we push a lot of our stuff to GitHub so we can do GitHub flow and use Travis and that sort of stuff. So at some point, we'll create a Kalamuna uh, app, uh, which we all use internally at Kalamuna. And that will have like all the containers that we use. It'll have Solar and Redis, the things that we're used to having locally. And then we'll have integration to pull sites from Pantheon and push to GitHub. And that will be the Kalamuna app. Um, and actually, speaking of apps, I can show you what those look like really quickly because those are all um, customized, customizable as well. So maybe I'll just go to the GitHub page because my Sublime seems weird. So, so when we create this Drupal app, um, let's see. I think it's app Drupal. Or maybe we'll look at the backdrop one. So this is what enables us to just do a backdrop create uh, or create backdrop really quickly. It's a small plugin. It's a plugin like any other plugin. Um, and it basically just contains metadata, uh, which is you basically just define certain tasks. Like, hey, I want to create this thing called back this backdrop task. And I want to like have these be the options that are available to the user. And then eventually, and then you basically just build a skeleton of the app. Um, in this apps folder, oh, where is it? Back here. So this is what contains the actual like the package.json and calbox.json and the config and the Docker files that we saw in that example. And that's basically all you have to do. Like I was able after I made the Drupal seven app, I was able to make the backdrop one in like seven minutes, um, which is pretty nice. And if you're uh, you know an org or a shop that wants to like customize these things, it's actually quite easy. You can override all the stuff in the calbox config. Uh, with a with a flat JSON file, so all you would need to do is go in here. This is just a, a list of the config. Let's actually, oops, kbox config less. Yay! Um, so here's our config. Um, so all you would have to do is actually, sorry, this gives me a lot of config because I'm inside the app. So let's bounce out of it. Let's do this. There we go. So you can actually see up here, here are the apps that we are actually like using. That's the GitHub project that we're pulling from. It's actually in, on, from the NPM registry. But you can make your own, um, you know, Calibox app, you know, for kitchens or whatever. And uh, you could um, put that on GitHub, create a node project with it, and just edit this uh, or override this file with like your app and your version. And it'll pull it down and you can, you can spin up your app sites really easily. So you can see the kind of power that this model has. Um, so that's just one to show you what the apps look like really quickly because they're quite simple. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the roadmap really quick and then we'll do some questions. Um, yeah, so the things that we're trying to do uh, next are integration with Pantheon. So you can push and pull sites to Pantheon when you create these apps. Uh, Azure, um, WordPress, and we're hoping to have all that stable version summer 2015, so not very far away. We're actually very close to having that already. Um, so that's the exciting thing. Uh, that's going to be like DevOps Zen, I think, for everyone who's like using Vagrant currently or any command line tool. I think this is going to be a much better way to do our stuff and faster way to do our stuff. Um, and then the big thing after that is the is the actual UI. So this will be what we will kind of basically the Calibox 2 version of what the, the V1 UI was. And this is where things are really going to be very, very different. Um, this is when a DevOps person can write all, can use Calibox to write you know, the kinds of apps and tooling and stuff that their shop needs, and then they can edit that config file, get all that, get all the stuff that they need, and deploy all those tools to all of their people with the GUI. So they don't really have to do anything. You can standardize everything really easily, and of course you have a cross-platform solution that all your developers can be on. It's not tied to anything. It's not Drupal-specific. You could do it for whatever. So I think this is a win for everyone. And that will be in fall 2015. If you contributed to the Kickstarter last year, first of all, thank you very much. And second of all, like we'll have uh, betas of this GUI available for testing before this, if you're wondering. Um, so again, just to rehash these five things, um, you know, we're very close to solving this problem for people. We think it's gonna be much, much better than MAMP, much better than Vagrant, much better than anything else that's out there. It's gonna be the thing to use. I think it's gonna be a big deal. Um, and uh, if you're interested, uh, that's right, yes, now you have the power. Um, thank you to Andrew Malice for finding this GIF somewhere. Um, 
And uh, if you're looking to hear more or to, to, to figure out whether like your organization is maybe ready to start moving over to some of this tech, um, set up a demo with us. If you're here at the con, we can do it at the con. If not, we can do it some other time in the ether uh, with the Google Hangouts or the other things that the crazy kids are doing. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so if there's any questions, I'd love to answer them. Hopefully there are or should be. If not, I will be very disappointed and I will you will all be dead to me forever. Yes, there's a microphone back there if you want to use it. So let's say you switched the recipe down from 5.3 to 5.5 on PHP and you've made some APC hacks and then do you go down to using opcache now. So what happens with those settings? They get discarded or you keep that container? Right. So if you back? were Right, it's a good question. So if you were to if you were to go into um, so first of all, there's this, there's this fun project that we did to actually enable us to build this app server, which might be also just useful for casual DevOps people or hardcore DevOps people, which is this PHP Brewer project, which is also on the Calibox GitHub repo. Um, and this is essentially a PHP app server factory, which lets you build from source different versions of PHP. Sorry, I can't read. It's like so small on my computer. There it is. PHP Brewer, so this is what we use to actually build the app server. Um, it's really quite nice. It's, uh, it's basically a Docker into container that spits out PHP versions. There's good documentation. It's easy to use. You can build kind of basically whatever versions of PHP you want. You can build more than one. They all kind of sit together. Then you can use those in your other containers, which is pretty nice. So that's what we're doing. So the way that this is set up is if you were to switch from 5.3 to 5.5, um, we're not using APC and 5.5. We're using opcache. Um, we don't actually have any op, we don't have an op cache config file right now, but you could put one in there and have it kind of work the same way. But by default right now, it'll, it'll just disable, there's no APC extension for 5.5 in our app server, so it just doesn't get loaded, um, op cache gets loaded instead of APC. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Nice t-shirt. Um, so you, you showed how to do like a, a new Drupal install. Sure. Um, what would you do if you had an existing code base and an existing database that you wanted to, to s set up using this? Right, that's a great question. Um, so uh, John Ouellette, who's sitting right there, wrote this nice quick start guide that's on our wiki um, that shows you how to get, uh, to how to currently import a site manually into Calibox. Um, I showed you how to do the Git part of it, that's fairly easy. Um, but uh, the DB is actually exposed to the outside world, uh, and you can actually access it with like SQL Pro or whatever. So that would be the way to get the DB in there. But um, yeah, Calibox slash Calibox in the wiki, there is a quick start guide somewhere. There's actually quite a quite a nice amount of things in here for anyone who's interested in learning more. Um, uh, but yeah, there's this quick start guide. This basically will tell you just how to get like a, for example, like a Pantheon site into Calibox too. Um, but this should be applicable to many other many other use cases as well. Hi. Uh, Hi. Well, first of all, I wanted to say this is so cool. You're so much ahead of anyone in the field. And I ran into your session by really just an accident because it was named something not related to Vagrian Docker Devil or anything <laughs> else. I thought it was a workflow, like content workflow thing. Uh, my question is you mentioned that uh, this will be cross platform, so Windows, Mac, and Linux. But I'm not sure you covered that too much. So can you elaborate on? The, what is being used for Windows and Mac, and uh, specifically around uh, syncing code, like sync folders, sure. uh, and the performance of, of the, those solutions. Right. Yeah. Sure. So, um, cross-platform. It's a it's a node. It's a node module. So it works kind of just that way for the command line. Uh, it should work on uh, Windows and Linux. We've tested Windows 7 and Windows 8. We've tested Debian and Ubuntu. Uh, we haven't tried Fedora yet. Uh, it seems to work pretty consistently on Mac as well. So you could you can you can follow the install steps in the wiki for Calibox, the command line of Calibox, and it should just work on all those things. Um, of course, like we develop mostly on Mac, so there likely are going to be more bugs than the other things, but we're waiting for people to use it and find them so we can try to fix them. Um, for the GUI side of it, because this is Node, we can actually build an Angular app on top of it with Node WebKit, and we actually have a prototype of that that already works on Windows and Linux. And so the GUI will be this Node WebKit app. It'll be a .app file for your Mac. It'll be a .exe on Windows, and it'll just be a bin on Linux. Uh, so that will be how those things work. 
Um, regarding sync thing, which is what we're using for um, the actual file sharing, we tried to implement with NFS first, and it was just ridiculously slow, like depressingly slow. And we were just like, we can't use this. It's we can't go up there in front of people and and show them this because it's gonna it's gonna be embarrassing. Um, that's kind of how slow it was. So we looked around for a bunch of things. We found sync thing. It's a product that's also still in fairly heavy development. So there are some problems with it. Um, and is moving ahead pretty quickly. Uh, but the nice thing about it is you're not, it's, it's syncing, it's not sharing. So you're not mounting any folders. You don't have to do what NFS does, which is like actually check to see if a file has changed every single time you do a read, which for Drupal and the amount of, like a ton amount of small files is really slow. Um, uh, it actually just pulls for changes every couple of seconds. I think it's like two seconds, two seconds. And then uh, we'll sync the file over. So it's actually, it's not, so you don't get the change as quickly as you would with NFS, but it's virtually the same, unless you're one of those people who's just like tab, 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 in which case just like chill out. Um, <laughs> um, but the real nice thing about it is you get basically native file system performance for your web server. So you can just develop really, really quickly. So any time that you might lose and waiting for the thing to sync, you're gonna make up like almost instantly just by not having to wait 45 seconds for your modules page to load or five minutes for your like features to diff themselves. Uh, which, you know, it sucks, basically. So what are you using for the Docker host? Uh, so the Docker host is, uh, is boot to Docker. So basically what we, when Calibox installs, it'll install boot to Docker, uh, which is just, just tiny core Linux with the Docker daemon inside of it, uh, running in VirtualBox. So that's what the actual infrastructure is. All your containers live inside of there. Nothing is really changed on your computer at all. Um, and that's what we're using for the Docker daemon. So when we run commands, we're just we're hitting the Docker, rem we're using the Docker remote API, hitting that stuff, and that's how the magic happens. Thank you. Yep. Hello, hello. It's hello. been a long time. <laughs> Indeed. Um, can I make your boot to Docker use parallels? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even like. That. I'll have to ask you. I'll have to ask you on GitHub. Doesn't even um, compute and, to me. And uh, the same thing solution you've implemented is that easy to reuse elsewhere? Because that sounds cool. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we we actually um, I think we, at some point we're probably going to publish. We so basically we just build a REST API wrapper, Node wrapper around it. At some point we might want to just publish that for other people yeah. to use. Do that. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I saw you ping. I saw you on some of the issue queues. You're everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, it actually, so NFS, I mean, is much easier to implement. Um, it's very simple. Um, sync thing was basically a giant pain in the ass to implement, uh, but the benefits, I think, made it justify the... Yeah, I mean, I use it on my computer. I never thought of using it for development. Yeah, we actually, we, we pinged uh, uh, um, the Borg, as we call him, yeah. uh, about it. Uh, he's a guy who, like, runs their project. Comage. Um, yeah, 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 Comage, and... Uh, and asked him, uh, you know, hey, we're using it for this. And he's just like, uh, this isn't really the use case that I had in mind, but I guess it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, well, all right, good enough for us. It's not NFS, so yeah. So, yeah. Cool. But uh, thanks. Hi. Uh, we're actually currently using, or I just started using Boxing. Okay. I'm just learning about the setup, but it looks very similar to this. Uh, I was just wondering if you can sort of compare or – you know, give me some advantages or disadvantages. Of sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not super familiar with like the actual details of Boxin, but they are. They, I think that they they try to solve some similar things. Um, I think that our. I mean, I think that our thing is obviously better. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know to what extent they've implemented container tech in Boxin at all. Um, I think they they do that to some degree, but I'm not 100% sure. If, if anyone knows, just feel free to just like shout out also. Um, I'd be interested to see like how they handle the syncing and how they how their architecture is extensible like ours. Like I think that the fact that we have this plugin system and you can basically add whatever functionality you want at any time it makes it just a lot different than just a straight up like orchestration tool like something like Fig or or even like Docker Compose promises to be. Um, I'm sorry that's not like a super great answer, but that's I think that's the most the most the, the most honest I can be with you without just lying about Boxin. Um, unless you want me to, in which case I can do that as well. <laughs> Hi there. Hey. Um, so since this is for local development, um, version one, you have to be online in order to create a new site on your local machine. How does this handle if you if you don't have internet? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think I think that it should work, but I'm I'm not sure we actually have tested. Have you tested this yet? Not to no. no. I'm not I'm not I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, the way that the DNS is handled, it might be it might 
I think that we'd use Open DNS or a Google DNS server. So we, we, if if that's true, then we might you might need to be actually be online. But that's something so, that we could change. Pretty so easily. like when you spin up a new site with version one, it has to go and download it from the internet. Does, right. Does two have to do that as well, or do you have something? Um, so if you're if you're just spinning up the containers and you've already downloaded the containers before, um, I don't think you you don't need to have to be connected to the internet to do that because all those all those containers. So the way that Docker works is it basically just like takes these diff these diffs of of images and like kind of piles them on each other. So if you have all of them um, and it sees that you have all of them cached, it'll just use what you have already. Um, so I think that probably should work, especially if you pass in that like build local flag, in which case it'll just kind of like do that. Cool. Um, so I think that it should, yeah. Hi again. Hi again. So the question is now that I have this, so I can see that this is not intended towards production. So uh, how do we, once we're done, let's say making an app, my teammates are done, how do we take uh, this image or kind of like get a puppet or a chef recipe to put it on bare metal or put it on a BPS? Is there any plans towards doing that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is, I mean, yeah, this is purely for local only. Like y it would be very bad to try to like put this, like to run the Calibox CLI, like on Linode somewhere and run your machines with it. Um, that would be very bad. Um, so there's a, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, the, the, the first part of it is uh, the deployment strategy for this is going to be what, what happens when we do these push and pull plugins. So for example, like if you consider like a Pantheon app, for example, like the Pantheon app would have an app, a PHP app server, MariaDB, Solar, and Redis, the, the containers that Pantheon actually uses, and those would be very close to production, but they, they're not going to be the same, but they're going to be very, very close. Um, and when you go to actually, so if you were just if you were just making a site and you wanted to deploy it to Pantheon, you would just do a Kbox push, put in your Pantheon name or whatever, and it would just create uh, the instance on Pantheon and push your stuff up, and that's how your thing would get on Pantheon, for example. Um, for something like Linode, um, you could theoretically run if you had if you're using like Pup or Chef, Chef or whatever to build out your infrastructure, um, and that's production ready stuff. You could have all that stuff end up in Docker containers, and you could use those Docker containers on Calibox if you wanted. Um, in which case, the deployment. I mean, you could write your own app that did the deployment for you as well. But it might just make the most sense to have you. Could, well, in that case, you actually I guess you could use Calibox to deploy your containers and orchestrate them both locally and for production. Like if you felt like the containers that you had were production ready, um, but that is not that is not the intended use case. But you could you could do that I suppose. Um, you would just have to take your current manifests or recipes or whatever and get them to not generate VMs but to generate containers instead, and then just put them into this as I as I kind of like showed. Aaron Porter, I'm expecting a heckle at some point also. Yeah, yeah. We were actually looking for Fortran developers, but you know, couldn't find any. Hey, any other questions? I was going to ask if you were being bought out by Verizon. Uh, I'm not allowed to discuss that in public. Good question, though. Uh, the actual answer to that is no. For anyone that doesn't know that I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that, yeah, we have time for one more if someone wants to just say something silly. Other than that, I think we're, we'll wrap up. Really, no one wants to say anything silly? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so if you if you go to uh, calibino.com, there's a Calibox page um, where you can sign up for a demo that will get you on the mailing list. There's also a Google group. What is that? <laughs> Was that calamuna.net? Yeah. No, it was some random thing. Um, anyway, yeah, so if you go to the Calamuna website, there's this Calabox section. Um, also, uh, those clouds are awesome, Tiago. I really like them. Oh, sorry. Then go to hell, Tiago. Um, so you can uh, you can request a demo, and it'll, you can sign up for your email. There's also a Google group um, that you can sign up for, uh, which I think that – I think just e you can send me an email, Mike at Calamuna.com. And, uh, yeah, yeah, down here, request a demo. So – all right, I think that's it. But thanks for coming. I appreciate it. What? What? Handouts at the booth. Come to the booth and get a handout. Uh, the Kalamuna booth? I don't know. What number is it? Behind four kitchens. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey. Oh, cool.
glad you liked it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've, and I've talked to I've talked to Josh quite a bit. About